What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another deck in battle here on PTCGO. This time we are going to be revisiting kind of an old deck and that's going to be Xerneas Break. Uh, Xerneas Break has actually been one, kind of one of my favorite pet decks ever since it's come out. I played Xerneas Break Giratina very heavily, at least at local events for the longest time. And definitely was one of my favorite decks, but unfortunately, I thought Xerneas Break never quite was good enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all of the Tier 1 decks. Um... You know, over the course of its lifespan, so it never really saw breakout success. But now that the format is different, it's slowed down a bit, uh, we're going to be revisiting it, see if it might finally have its time to shine. So the reason we are looking at Xerneas Break is for its attack life stream. So it does 20 times the amount of energy attached to all of your Pokemon, just for two fairy energy. And so you might be thinking, well, that's good, but how are we going to get the energy in play to actually do that? And it's going to be in part thanks to the regular Xerneas. And it is important to note we need to play this one, not the one from Breakthrough that has Rainbow Force. We want this one because it has the Geomancy attack. Just for one Fairy Energy, choose two of your bench Pokemon. And for each one, search your deck for a Fairy Energy and attach it to them. So in the early game, if we lead the game with the Xerneas, we can Geomancy a few times and get a bunch of energy in our field, hopefully, to start hitting for large amounts of damage. And then in the past, like I said, this attack was just a little too slow, I think, to really push this archetype to, uh, to being a Tier 1 deck. But like I said, now we have a new format. It's a little bit slower. Uh, we're going to see what we can make happen with this. Uh, but we definitely need some other partners for Xerneas Break. And the main one is going to be a 2-2 Garboder line. And so we are playing the Garbotoxin Garboder, not the Trash Avalanche one from Guardians Rising. And we're playing this one because as long as it has a tool card attached to it, uh, no Pokemon have abilities. So if you look at the current metagame right now, it's very, very ability reliant. So you have things like Gardevoir GX, Metagross GX, Vicavolt, uh, Greninja. I mean, even Tapu Lele that's in every deck. A lot of great abilities are in the format right now that are worth shutting off. And so without Garboder, I think Xerneas Break is kind of like a mediocre deck against a lot of these Tier 1 decks that are running around, like the Gardevoirs, Metagross, etc. Uh, but with Garboder in play, you know, in conjunction with Xerneas Break being a one-prize, uh, decent attacker, I think this deck actually has solid matchups against a lot of things, thanks to this Garboder. So that's why we are going to be playing it, and uh, we actually have some... Uh, interesting ways we can actually activate this Garbotoxin ability, but we'll get to that in a, in a little bit. And so the only other Pokemon we're playing in this list is three Tapu Lele GX for that Wonder Tag ability. So whenever we bench it from our hand, we get a supporter. But also Energy Drive is, you know, kind of a decent attack in this deck. So 20 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. You know, this has always been kind of just a decent backup attack. Uh, players have been able to fall back onto, but especially in this deck where we play lots of energy acceleration, uh, energy drive actually sees a little bit more value in this particular type of deck. So definitely a decent backup attacker if need be. And that's actually it for the entire Pokemon line. You know, nothing too fancy, just pretty straight to the point. And the list in general is like that. I'm not really playing too many techs or, you know, cards like that. I'm just trying to go for straight consistency if possible. So if you look at our supporter line, it's the most generic supporter line you will probably ever see, to be honest. Four Sycamore, four N, three Guzma, one Bridges. Kind of the standard uh, supporter skeleton that you will see in most decks in the post-rotation format. Um, so yeah, four Sycamore, four N, just to draw cards. Three Guzma to choose what we want to take knockouts on. And of course, one Bridget just to search our basics out of our deck. So no surprises there. Four Ultra Ball, just another kind of standard inclusion. Um, I guess things are a little little interesting with our recovery options. We are playing two Super Odd uh, instead of two Rescue Stretchers. So shuffle three combination of Pokemon and basic energy from your discard pile into your deck. So you might be thinking, well, why not Rescue Stretcher? Rescue Stretcher is a much more flexible card. And the reason we're playing Super Odd is because we also play Max Elixir in this deck. So having the option to shuffle energy back into your deck will increase the odds of your Max Elixirs actually working. So that's the reason we're favoring Super Odd. If you really want to, you can debatably cut one Super Odd for a Rescue Stretcher, um, but I think at least one Super Odd is absolutely necessary no matter what in this deck. So for Max Flixer, like I just mentioned, that will allow us to get some more energy in play. Look at the top six cards of our deck and attach a basic energy we find there to a basic 
on our bench. So between this and geomancy, we have a couple ways to actually start flooding our energy uh, onto our field. So let's take a look at our tool cards. We're playing three choice band, kind of an obvious inclusion. We do more damage to GXs and EXs, uh, especially good in a non GX and EX deck like this. But then the other card we're playing is three EXP share. So whenever your active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, you may move one basic energy from that Pokemon to the Pokemon that EXP share is attached to. So you might realize or might be noticing uh, we're not playing any float stones and that's usually the main you know, tool card that we put on Garbodor. Um, but actually you don't even need float stone in this deck which is something I actually really like. So the idea is we can put our EXP shares on Garbodor to activate its ability and then also whenever our Xerneas is getting knocked out, our Garbodor keeps the energy in play as well. And so your next question might be, well, why aren't you playing Floatstone? Garbodor has a huge retreat cost. You know, that's a big liability, especially if someone is playing like a Tapu Koko or something like that. They can easily, you know, Guzma up your Garbodor, spread behind it or, you know, do whatever. And so the reason we are not playing Floatstone is because we're also playing four copies of Fairy Garden. So each Pokemon that has any Fairy Energy attached to it has no retreat cost. So this is good, you know, not having to discard our energy when we retreat is great, kind of enables us to always, you know, do the maximum amount of damage as possible. So I actually really enjoy playing EXP Share and Fairy Garden in this deck because, uh, you know, having the Fairy Garden allows us to play more, I'm trying to think of the right word for it, more optimal tools maybe. Uh, so Floatstone a lot of times is nice, but a lot of times may not necessarily have, you know, any a special synergy with the core strategy of the deck. But EXP Share, like I said, not only activates Garbo's ability, but also, you know, has some core synergy with the rest of the deck. So that's something I actually really, really like about this deck. And then just for our energy, we're playing 10 Fairy Energy. We're playing kind of a big count just because we always want to hit one off of a Max Luxor. And especially after we Geomancy once or twice, um, you know, that's going to reduce the odds of our max elixirs working. So we definitely want to play, I think, no less than 9, but I think 10 has been kind of a decent number that I've been playing around with. And then we're also playing 3 double colorless energy, so it just provides 2 colorless energy. And you guys might be thinking, well, why would you do that? Xerneas Break uses fairy energy to attack. Well, the reason we're playing double colorless energy is because Xerneas Break's attack actually does not discriminate against uh, special energy. So that means whenever we put down a double colorless energy, we're basically adding 40 damage to our field as opposed to 20 extra with just a fairy energy. So that's why we're playing the three. Like I said, it doesn't really gel well with our Xerneases. That's why I'm not maxing this out at four. But like I said, if we can get down one or two of these over the course of the game, uh, it'll definitely boost our damage output pretty nicely. And also we can put it on Tapu Lele GX if we need to and to attack with that. So yeah guys, that is the list we're going to be trying out. I'm really excited for Xerneas to actually uh, seem kind of decent. Um, it's been a deck that I've been really hoping uh, would have its time to shine at some point, and maybe it, it's finally come, who knows. But I'm going to switch over to the battle portion of the video to show you how this deck looks in action. And actually guys, if you can, make sure to watch all the way through, because one thing we're actually starting to do in all of our PTCGO videos going forward is giving out free PTCGO codes uh, throughout the video. So there will be one inserted at some point during the battle, so be on the lookout for that. But let's switch over to that and we'll show you how this looks in action. Alright guys, so we have ourselves a game here and it looks like our opponent has a grass coin and a Bulbasaur deck box, so probably some sort of grass deck if I just had to guess. We do win the coin flip, so that's definitely good. Um, if it's Tapu Bulu, I'm feeling pretty good. If it's Galissapod, not quite as much, just because Tapu Bulu is very reliant on abilities, whereas Galispod isn't, so. Um, so we'll stop to see, and our opponent's playing Aether Paradise, and also Lightning Energy, so this tells me this is probably going to be a Vicavolt Tapu Bulu deck of uh, some kind here. And I'm feeling pretty good about this, because we have Garbodor uh, to shut off that uh, Vicavolt, um, you know, so that's definitely very good for us. And here our opening hand is kind of awkward I, I won't really lie to you um, so what do we do we're definitely an ultra ball we need to get a supporter um, I think we can discard DCE it seems okay and I kind of want to keep all of our fairy yarns just because Tapu Bulu normally plays uh, at least two field blowers so our uh, 
you know, fairy gardens are definitely uh, precious cargo in this match, assuming it is just a normal Tapu Bulu style deck. Here we're taking a look through our deck. Uh, we're going to grab this Tapu Lele. And here's a situation where, you know, I would normally love to grab Bridget, but unfortunately, you know, for next turn, we really don't have anything much to work with. So I think, unfortunately, we just have to end here. And so here we can attach a fairy energy and we can put down the fairy garden. And that way, if we get a Xerneas, we can at least get this Trubbish out of the active spot. I was thinking about putting the EXP share, but like I said, uh, these Tapu Bulu decks normally play a heavy field blower count, so I don't really want to put these EXP shares down until we can actually evolve into Garbiter. So here we're just going to retreat into Xerneas. We have energy for next turn. We have supporters, so we're definitely good to go. And, you know, on their first turn, I don't really expect our opponent to have too much going on, so uh, I think we're in a good spot so far. So your opponent is going to Heavy Ball. They're going to grab a Tapu Bulu GX, so yeah, this does look like a Tapu Bulu deck. Uh, normally they don't run Aether Paradise, um, you know, in my experience, so they, you know, had to make some cuts somewhere to fit that in, but beyond that, it's probably pretty standard. So your opponent's just going to Skyla for Rare Candy, so they must have Tapu Bulu, or I'm sorry, uh, Vicable in hand. So that means we're definitely going to end our opponent here, so we're definitely also going to attach this EXP share, we're going to attach the Fairy Energy, and, uh... Yeah, we could do that. Um, I feel bad having to Ultra Ball away another DCE, but I think if we can get this Garbodor online, I think that's just way too powerful you know, of a, of a play to pass up. So we'll get the Garbodor online. Now it's going to shut off abilities for both of us, so that means his Vic Volts won't be able to power up Tapu Bulu's, and he's not going to use Tapu Lele to grab a supporter either. So here we get another Xerneas down. We have a Xerneas break, but I really don't want to play that just yet because we only need to Geomancy this turn. And if our opponent does have something like a Field Blower uh, to get rid of our tools and Stadium cards and you know has a way to get Vicable in the active spot and take a knockout, it'd be kind of a waste to play down the Xerneas break. So what does our opponent have? Okay, we see a Grass Energy. That's a good start for our opponent. Like I said, they really need Field Blower, but here just a pass. So we are definitely in a great spot. And our opponent just concedes, so I guess the I'm guessing the Garbodor was just a little too much for them to overcome in this matchup. And so you can definitely see how Garbodor definitely very good against these ability reliant decks there in the format. But let's get in another game. Hopefully we can get a longer one this time to show off the deck a little bit better. So here our opponent has some psychic uh, deck box and and a coin. So um, yeah, this could be anything. Could be a Lunala deck. He has Lunala on his deck box. Could be some sort of uh, Garbiter variant as well. And okay, we actually have a pretty decent opening hand. We have Bridget ready to go. Um, we also have an Ultra Ball to grab a Lele for the following turn too. So if our, as long as our opponent doesn't end us, I think we'll be okay because this is actually a pretty strong opening hand. But here our opponent is going to play an Ultra Ball, getting rid of some Psychic Energies. Alright, um, doesn't tell us anything too much just yet. Okay, so we're going to see a Tapu Lele come down. I'm assuming, or actually hoping, <laughs> that they're just going to bridge it and not grab N. So we're going to see a Wonder Tag. What does our opponent get here? And they get bridge sets. Awesome. That means we get to keep our uh, our godly opening hand that we have here. Uh, so here we're going to see a bridge, and this will probably tell us what we're actually playing against. Okay, so we have a couple Phantoms and a Trubbish. So I'm just going to guess some sort of Trevenant Garbiter deck. Probably the Trevenant from Guardians Rising that does damage based on the amount of trainer cards in your opponent's hand. So you're definitely going to bridge it. Uh, let's get a Trubbish and a couple of Xerneas in play. You know, the Garbetter, not too like super relevant in this matchup since none of his attackers really need energy, or I'm sorry, uh, abilities. So, you know, not too relevant, but you never know if we can get Garbetter, uh online. It'll at least take away maybe a Tapu Lele play from our opponent at some point. Alright, so we have an energy. We're going to max elixir. Uh, I'm going to get down an additional energy. And do we play the other max elixir? That's what I'm thinking about. But I, hmm. I think I might want to hang on to it because we're going to need some cards to use uh, to discard with Ultra Ball. So I might hang on to it just in case uh, you know that we don't have any better options to discard. But we can still use it on next turn if need be. But here we're just going to G-Man so we get couple energy in place, so right now our Xerneas Breaks will be swinging for 80. And our opponent's going to get their own Garbodor online, I'm okay with that. Okay, they are going to use N. 
Um, if they had gotten down a tool and not end us, we would have been in a bad spot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think we'll be good to go. This hand is pretty workable as well. And so here opponent has rainbow energy. It's interesting. And we're going to see a floatstone come down, shutting off abilities, but I'm okay with that. We have this sycamore in hand, so we won't need to use Tapu Lele. And here our opponent is going to use Ascension to get out Trevenant. And I'm actually okay with this. So here we have a Fairy Garden. We'll get that down because we are going to Sycamore this turn. We're going to use this Max Elixir. Uh, and honestly, I probably should have Ultra Ball before using the Max Elixir just because that would have increased our odds of hitting it. So slight minor misplay, but it ended up working out. Uh, going to Ultra Ball away this Super Rod and another Ultra Ball. We'll grab Xerneas Break. Okay, so we actually, I believe, uh, right now we're swinging for, what, 100? So we need one more energy to get a knockout this turn. And we do get it, so that's awesome. So we can uh, retreat into this other Xerneas, uh, the Xerneas Break. We can evolve into a second Xerneas Break. Um, yeah, let's evolve that one. That's okay. And we'll just spread our energy out. We can put it on a Trubbish, or we could put it on the Xerneas, but we're just going to spread our energy around. And, uh, you know, make sure that no one Pokemon has way too much energy on it. Okay, so we're going to take a knockout on this Trevenant. Uh, like I said, we had just enough energy to take a knockout here. And I don't think we've played enough item cards for our opponent to knock us out with a Trash Winch. And they only even have a, another Trubbish in play just yet. But that's something we do need to be mindful of in this matchup. Assuming they do play the Trash Winch Garbiter. It would make sense. So our opponent ends us into a new hand. And they can hit us for 80 but I'm actually perfectly okay with this. We can respond pretty pretty decently. <laughs> okay, so our opponent is going to get down another Trubbish, so they are probably aiming to set up a Trash Lanch at some point. Okay, and... Okay, I thought it was 20 for every trainer card, but it's 80. Or 30, so... Uh, so they did 120 instead of 80. But here we're going to use Max Luxor. We attach the DCE to Garboder. That might seem, like, really weird... But the reason I'm doing that is because I want to put my energy on kind of like unfavorable targets for our opponent to Lysander. I'm sorry, uh, Guzma up. So we could have, you know, like I said, load energy onto Xerneas Breaks, but those are attackers. Our opponent wants to take those out anyways. So I want the energy spread around specifically on kind of like these unfavorable uh, Guzma targets. Okay, so here I'm just double checking how much, uh, how many item cards we've played. And if we play the Max Elixir, um, I think our opponent will be hitting us for 140, so just shy of a knockout on a Xerneas break. So here we're going to use Livestream. Yet again, we're hitting for 200 now, so you can start to see how the damage really ramps up with this, this Xerneas deck once you get uh, you know, some energy in play. And we have the EXP shares as well, so even if we get knocked out, we should be able to keep the energy in play. Okay, so what does our opponent have? They are... Opting to attach to the Trubbish, I'm actually okay with that. And we're just going to see a pass. This is, yet again, fine by me. So what do we do here? That's the question. We can uh, we can put down this Lele, potentially. Um, I don't like the idea of having a two-prize Pokemon on the field at this point, just because, you know, we already have a solid lead, and that might, you know, potentially give our, our opponent an out to coming back. But, uh, you know, I really want to make sure that we keep a lot of energy in play so I think we're just going to bench Lele attach a DCE. Lele is a decent backup attacker if we ever have to use it for some reason. Uh, but here we're going to start hitting for 240. Our opponent really needs to do something here. I think this turn is going to be a big turn for them to respond and take away some of the energy that is on our field. Something like a field blower on our uh, you know EXP shares and a Guzma to knock out maybe uh, something that's damaged would be uh, really good on our opponent's part. So we're going to see another energy come down on the Trevenant. So unfortunately they're not hitting DCs. I I don't know if we've even seen one from our opponent yet. Oh, we may have. Uh, I forget now. But uh, anyway, so since we have EXP shares in play, we can take these energies off this fallen Xerneas break and uh, keep them in play. But yet again, we can respond really easily here and... Uh, you know, after taking out this Trevenant, we'll go down to two prizes. But, you know, I think what I might do is... You know, we're, we're just shy of a Trash Ranch Garbiter being able to knock us out. But what I might do is I might play down some of these extra cards. 
and Sycamore into a new hand because I really want to take a knockout this turn and then have a Guzma ready to go on next turn to uh, to hopefully uh, win the game by knocking out a Lele. That's kind of the ideal situation. So hopefully we can grab ourselves a Xerneas break. We can throw down some more energy. Um, I guess we can put it on Lele. That seems... <laughs> we have so, so much energy in play already. Uh, I'm just trying to think of where the safest target is. I think probably Lele is fine. Our opponent needs to draw cards, I think, at this point. So I don't think they can afford to Guzma. Unless they just top deck something to be really good. I'm not sure. So we're in a Sycamore. And unfortunately, we do not hit Guzma. But nevertheless, guys, I mean, we're in a good spot here. We can take a knockout on this Trevenant. And pretty much anything our opponent promotes, we can, <laughs> we can just kind of keep responding. Uh, so we're hitting for 280. This is absolutely insane. <laughs> So even if our opponent had like a uh, like a Waylord EX or something like that, which isn't legal, but if they had something that monstrous, we could still knock out something like that. But here our opponent just passes yet again, so they're definitely not having a good game. Uh, here we're going to get down yet another energy. Uh, I guess we can put down the Choice Band. I don't think that really hurts anything. Um, even if we just take a knockout here and get end down to one, I don't think it even matters at this point just because our board is just kind of crazy. So here, what does our opponent have? Did they at least, you know, finish off the game by taking a knockout? And they cannot, so they just concede. We are going to uh, kind of definitively take that game. Xerneas was hitting for a crazy 300 damage towards the end of the game there. So, yeah, you know, if your Xerneas definitely goes unchecked like that, it's easy to see how it can ramp up and do a ton of damage. And with it only being a one prize attacker, you know, some of these GX decks uh, might have a hard time responding, especially with the Garboder in play, shutting off abilities for things like Metagross, uh, like like Vicavolt, Gardevoir, etc. So you never know, maybe Xerneas is making a comeback into the game, we'll have to see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, as usual, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you can support us uh, on our Patreon, I'll have a link in the description for that. Or if you want to pick up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would be greatly appreciated. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you for the next one.